Good day everyone. It's nice and early here over in Perth. We're going to get cranking on this bloody Q&A here. We're going to roll it off straight quick. Yeah. Hey everyone. Good morning. I'm going to pass this one off to Max. We've got uh, just Taylor uh, with a with a number of zero in the name for the O. Hopefully you know who you are. When did you guys start as a band with all the current members? All the current members. Uh, well, band started end of two like start of two thousand fourteen, but with the current members, I would say mid two thousand nineteen. Uh, yeah, that's it pretty much. Yeah. Jaden joined the band uh, in the middle of 2019. We released uh, the first EP together on uh, like end of uh, November. Yeah, yeah. 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 All right, and we've got another one here. Um, let me just find his name. Um, okay, I'll, I'll give you another one. <laughs> okay, we got. Um, Monster with a lot of numbers in your name on Instagram asked us this one. Uh, what's it like trying to come up with new material and not have every song sound the same? Oh, yeah, that's a tricky one. Uh, I'll be honest with you, I've never thought about that because um, I don't know when, you, when you're kind of writing. I mean, if, for a band in our level, I mean, it's not like we have released you know 30 albums, so so far. I don't think I ever had that issue because, uh, yeah, it's just naturally just came out and you, uh, you just come up with materials, which is surprisingly, they don't sound, uh, exactly like each other. <laughs> that, that would be my best answer. But, but yeah, I mean, you know, just as a guitarist, when I, when I, when I'm writing riffs, uh, I'll make sure they don't sound like each other or, uh, you know, like they don't sound like another guitarist by, 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 any, by, by mistakes, like, you know. It happens all the time, so, uh, but yeah, it's hard, and you never know. You might release a song, and then <laughs> two days after, you might be like, "Shit, that sounds like you know that band." No wonder I like that riff. I've totally ripped that off. From yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. All right, and we've got someone, uh, Alexander Lawrence, asked me, "Where did you learn to do metal vocals?" Well, that'd be probably in the shower, as a young tacker out of school. Mm. Um, Frustrated high school kid, pissed off at the world, wanted to rebel and do vocals, I guess you could say. And um, when people ask how to learn vocals, I always say, well, I learned trying to bark like a dog. I'd be like, woof, woof, woof. And someone said, you kind of sound like you're growling. I was like, growling, yes. Mm -hmm. And I loved Winston McCall, so it was a cold day in hell, and I used to just cover the shit out of that in my bedroom. Mm -hmm. But multiple times trying to get his lows. I could never do it, but that was always my goal. And that's how I learned how to scream. So we got a, we got actually someone asking us a question. Yeah, we got Wander Elson. Wanden Elson. Hey, mate. And uh, he's asking us if we've got any plans to come to LA in the future. Ooh, I well, would love that, man. Hopefully this coronavirus thing will uh, go away yeah. soon. And then, uh, yeah. State will be one of the first places we want to go because we actually have a lot of followers there. And uh, yeah, they're always kind to us. So we'd love to come hang with y'all. Yeah. And LA. Yeah. That would be tasty. Celebrities. We would enjoy that. Woo. All right. I've got uh, another one here uh, for Max. Oh, me again. Calder. What do you feel is the most challenging part in general when making music uh, any part of not sit, not necessarily the sound of writing, mm. just like curious overall, like what's the most challenging part for us? Oh, for me, for me, it's always uh, choruses. Yeah. Because uh, right. my background is like, you know, progressive metal, classical music, and I'm just, I, I think I'm pretty good with just coming up with riffs right after each other, like how Nucleus used to be. But with our, uh, with the new style that we, um, you know, pursuing these days, uh, catchy music and catchy choruses, from pretty much like the most important, you know, part of it. So yeah, coming up with catchy choruses mm. for me. Oh, yeah. For me, it's just writing lyrics. I'm not very literate, so writing lyrics is always, always a grind for me. Um, without them sounding 
generic or, or like something I've heard that just pees me off. I've always got to get the rest of the guys to spell check everything I do. <laughs> it's just embarrassing. Uh, and then I've got crooked spades here. There's a question I can't answer, but this is one that says, is nucleus just a cool name or is there a meaning behind it? Well, uh, nucleus coming from nucleus, which is uh, it's the center of atom. And uh, <clears throat> I found it because it's, it's, it's uh, as small as it is, it's pretty much the most frightening and most uh, like the strongest, whatever, I don't know, like the smallest thing you can find in the world. Plus, I uh, also look at it as like a, a unit. So when we're in the band, it's like a unit and we work together as a team. Yeah, that's, that was the idea pretty much. Yeah. Good question. And, and Stephen Basin asked when we start, formed as a band, but you should answer that. I think I saw that, yeah. Uh, we'll answer another one from Crooked Spades. He loaded us up, eh? Um, he also said, uh, what's every member's favourite song and why? Well, Ooh. <laughs> well, mine is the one it's been released. It's, got, it's going to be released on uh, June, June the 10th. 10th. Yeah. Yep. It's called Pretend Pessimist. Mm -hmm. That will be my favourite. Me too. Newest is always best. Yeah. You know, playing these songs over and over and yeah. you, you start to get really sick of them. From the old stuff, I guess, older stuff, I guess, would be probably, I don't know. They're all pretty good, honestly. I don't have really one favourite between all of them. And uh, Crooked Spades also, he's trying to get some uh, dirt on how we work and he's saying, uh, what was the, what's the biggest struggle the band has dealt with besides Convy? Uh, you know. You answer that. Well, we're a pretty boring old band. We don't do anything outrageous. So we haven't had any dramas, really. Um, no. Nah, I mean, we've, we've, we've jumped up on stage, yeah. ready, to, ready to kick it. And um, our in rigs just decided to get hijacked by another local band. Um, and they logged into ours and uploaded their settings into it. Um, by mistake. By mistake, but you know, we got up there and shit hit the fan big time and we're stressing. <laughs> and we had our sound guy and two other sound guys and the venue tech all Figuring just, just scratching going. their heads because they didn't understand you know, our rig. Um, lucky we had our man Scotty there and he managed Scotty. to see through it and get us on the road, on, back on track. And we only missed out on a, a song or two of the set, but yeah. you sweat bullets when stuff like that happens and it stresses us out big time running an in ear monitoring system with all our uh, orchestral samples in the background, you know, we, we feel like we can't play without it. But it's worth it. It's worth it. We're gonna cover that in a, in a nice little yeah. video we'll throw on YouTube. I'll take yous all through it. tech geek section. Yeah, it'll be pretty nerd heavy, but for anyone wanting to build one, it's gonna be, you know. Cost you a lot of money. Yeah. A lot of time. We found a good, good effect, cheap, effective way to do it, we reckon. All right, what's next? All right. Um, Oh, we've got a few, another person grabbing by the PC. <laughs> I won't pronounce it properly. But he's asking us when we're going to come to the States and oh. as soon as we can. As soon as we can. Please get a band from a state to, you know, ask us to come as well. There's so many good ones there. And one of me boys, WA down south there, Simon Black Barrett. He asked us in terms of modern and up and coming bands, who are we excited by? Mm. Well, what would be yours? Mine would probably be, you know, uh, Northlane's latest album's quite outside the box. Um, I mean, it's rewrapped Lincoln Park in a way, but they've just brought their own modern spin to it, and I really like what they've mm. done there. It's really creative, really um, outside the box for what was happening in the metalcore scene at the time. Um, definitely goes to show how stagnant it was getting when a band comes out with a fresh release like that. Mm. Um, and you've got bands like Polaris and, and Thornhill and Void of Vision and, you know, it's just a really Make healthy, suffer. Really yeah. healthy scene at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Make them suffer just relentless you, as yeah. always. And yeah, for, for me it's pretty much the same. Uh, I would add one more band to it, uh, Silent Planet. Yeah, I love those guys and, uh, yeah, yeah. It's just Great, and yeah, all the other uh, bands that Jaden mentioned, yeah. 
And we've got uh, Nathan Drums, 247. You're on that 24-7, apparently. Must love drums. Um, what are some hobbies and interests outside of the band? Um, we don't have any. I don't do. <laughs> I have a son. He's not my hobby. He's my life. But, uh, I don't know. Just... Yeah, I love, I love going out in the mornings and like, you know, eating breakfast in cafes and just, you know, drink coffee uh, when, you know, in any sorts of situation <laughs> with my wife and with my son and uh, yeah, with all my friends. I love that. That's my hobby. Mm. You might have seen on my feed, but that's my hobby. Yeah, it's this guy. What's so your progress? What, if what if you, you know what that me? is, hit me up. That's 40k. But if, if you know what this work in progress is, let, let me know. I'd be really interested. You can tell from his cape. It's a very... Might be an animal cape, maybe. Yeah, check out his private page. You might. Yeah. Let's geek out on that. Yeah, heaps of photos. When I go on tour, I'll bring him, and I'm going to battle everyone that comes to our shows that wants one. Yeah. And it's going to be just a carnage of orcs. Yeah. An orc scourge on tour, following the Nucleus tour. Just, just yeah, a green sea, demolishing all you 40k... Yeah, it's weird. We don't really have any hobbies outside of music. That's it. Sorry, guys. Speak for yourself. Watching TV shows, if that's a hobby, I don't know. Yeah. And then one of my boys, Sam Hopkins, had a question for me. Um, he said, how has it been coming into an already well-established band? Obviously, you've had your own style and ideas and vision. So how was it impacted? How has it impacted you trying to fit into the Nucleus dynamic? And have you had to compromise, etc.? Well, I joined because I really liked where the band was going. So we're already kind of on the same page. And I think that's why it works so well because mm. we just sort of, me and Max especially, both sort of understood what we wanted yeah. musically and it all just fit really easy. So we just do what comes natural to us and it just all sort of works. So there wasn't really any compromise. No, and, um, no. That obviously they seem to give me creative freedom on lyrics and and what I do vocally. So it's, you know, I just do what I do, and they do what they do, and it just works. So that might that might sound really bad, but I actually don't know lyrics except the parts that I've seen, because I just know Jaden's gonna do a good job for it. So I don't like to write my lyrics down. Yeah, <laughs> I keep them in. I hate memorizing lyrics, so I'm not good at it. But yeah, the odd person will hit me up and say, hey, you could, "What's the lyrics from?" You know, meds or all this, and I go, oh, I'll have to write them down for you. What a pain. So I've slowly written a few yeah. down, um, and you can find them like uh, on YouTube when we've got the tracks in the description. That's where I put them. Yeah. You got Ocean, Eclipse, and Meds have all got the lyrics up. So if you're interested in that, I'd love to see Check a vocal cover. Yeah, yeah. Our Ocean has the we lyrics. We definitely have up. good content. I'll, I'll, you know, we spend times and think about what we're going to say. Yeah, yeah. I, just, I just like it to be interpretive and if you hear it and think it means one thing and I've written it to mean another then I want you to retain that idea that it's meant that thing that's connected with you as opposed to me bitching about my little problems when it could be something that a lot you know could have come across a lot more relatable that's just something Corey Taylor has said and he likes to have his lyrics be conceptual in a way that it's sort of it's it's metaphorical kind of can be interpreted Silent Planet guys have really good lyrics too mm. it's very uh, yeah if I always look up the meaning I'm like bloody hell Matt Tuck another bird you've broken up with you know I just get sick of it but if I listen to it and go yeah that's about me when I you know when I bloody spill my Warhammer paint then it's it means a lot more to me so yeah I don't like to diver, di- diverge the divulge the, the meaning of our songs because I'd rather them be Interpreted by you. Yeah, leave it to interpretation. Yeah, for sure. That's it. We've got next. We have. <laughs> how long do you get your... How do you get your beard looking like that from Lost Season 1? This is definitely a question for Jaden. Um, I just wake up like this, I guess. And, uh, He's lucky. Then I gel it, and then I dry it, and then I... <laughs> You trim it from time to time, right? Yeah, I trim it. i got to trim it myself because, you know, it's a bit hard. It's a bit hard. Okay, so we have a question from uh, West Cage, if I'm saying it right. West Cage. Oh, Corey Taylor's my man. 
um, I love I love his analogies and how his lyrics are almost just one massive analogy because I hate it when they're like, Sophie, you bitch, you broke up with me on Elm Street at 4.30. Elm Street. It's just, it's just so direct well, and that's obvious. That's a bad street to, bro- to break up to Elm Street. Yeah, but you get my drift. I just hate it when people are so obvious what they're yeah, singing about. Yeah, I like, direct. You know, I like Corey because he... It's such a big analogy, and his his analogies are great. You know, yeah, like cool shit. For sure. You know, just just anything. Um, you know, I want to slit your throat and fuck the wound. I want to dig inside and fill the spoon. Mm. You know, just all sorts of fountain made of piss and vinegar. I just anything Corey Taylor yeah. spits out of his dirty little mouth, I just eat up. I love more that. symbolic and indirect. I like it more for sure. Mm. Yeah. I'm not a fan of direct. It is direct. it is punk rock summed up. I'm sorry. No. <clears throat> Sweet. I was gonna cough a band name, but I thought that'd be a bit bad. No. I won't. Um and Ty, down from Esperance, a mate of ours, said, When are you gonna support Metallica? And we'll worry, we'll... we've had to knock back a few offers from them already. They won't fucking pay us enough. Well, dude, that was one of the one of the best days of my life. Because Metallica is the band I grew up with. Because I'm old. Yes, I am old. Uh Oh, dude, yeah, I can't imagine how good that would be. I think it's every metal band dream to play with Metallica, I guess. I guess so. Why not? Yeah, it's going to be a stadium show. You know, the I'd, I'd prefer to play with uh, Kill Switch and just... Yeah, like, but, you know, Metallica is like... It's like... <whistles> hey, yeah. guys. It's like right up there. It's like it's really big. Yeah, so you can't see it. But yeah. Oh, yeah, I mean, yeah, the list of bands that I want to play with them. A lot of tour with them. Yeah. Do, oh, yeah, I can at least just 10... Bands in Australia right now. I've got a, a another one here. I think you just joined the chat too. We've got this Grim 18. Um, how do you guys pass the time since after all touring involves a lot of waiting and travelling and waiting and so Well, we're, we, we just, we can chew the fat forever as you can see. We can just talk oh. shit all the time. So we just keep amused in each other's company if you, really. If you're outside Australia, I like to go sightseeing. Like, just... Our plan is beautiful. There's so many nice places around that you can go. Like when, 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 uh, when uh, we were touring with, uh, this is ages ago, Six Feet Under, uh, in Europe, uh, Germany was just so beautiful. So, yeah, I, I love to just go and see different places. Mm. Uh, same with Australia. When we were touring Australia, it was the same thing, to be honest with you. Yeah, you can't beat the Aussie Outback. Yeah, yeah. And we got another question from West Cage. Uh, what are your favorite bands? Ooh individually all right you go first well we talked about our biggest you know some bands that were emerging in australia that we really enjoyed so i'll try to keep it stuff that isn't australian um and for me i'd have to say it's a mix of of a bit of punk and um i must say i'm on a huge under oath kick at the moment i mean that band just shits gold i I just can't believe it honestly (laughs) Lost in the Sound of Separation and Define the Great Line have got to be some of the most solid pieces of work ever. And um, they did some live Q&As on that recently about how they recorded it. And mm. just just the way they recorded it, they didn't lay the vocals. And Lost in the Sound of Separation, it was all single takes. The vocals weren't written until they got to the studio, so it was really just instinctual oh, vocals wow. just pushed out. That's cool. And it just comes across... I just love how it all came across. Organic and like, yeah. Under Earth for me, I really like... And, um, you know, I, I'm a big Kill Switch fan and always have been. So their B-side EP they released, I've been really enjoying that. Yeah. You know, and Val and May dropped that new song, Outsider, not too long ago. That's pretty good. And a new, a song I might listen to three or four times a day at the moment is um, Devon Townstead's Genesis. That song takes you on a fucking adventure on headphones. Devon Townstead, yeah. Cool. Yeah. I, uh, well, uh, it's weird for me because... I, I can list like a couple of bands that I got inspired by them a lot. Uh, I, I don't listen to them that much anymore. Actually, I do, actually, no. So, like, I would say Dream Theater, Miss Sugar, My Dying Bride, um, Machine Head, and uh, yeah, let's just leave it to these four. And then uh, the new band that I you listen to them, like every day these days would be Make Them Suffer. Polaris, um, you know, Solid Planet, I love these guys, yeah. Mm. I'm also a big fan of classical music and just folk music, 
So yeah, I'll not listen to anything that's good, to be honest with you. But yeah, those four bands that I mentioned before inspired me since uh, I stopped playing guitar. And these new bands inspired me to create this new music, you know, with the guys in Nucleus. Cool. What's next? What next we've got? What's, what's your oh, we've got another one saying what's your favourite albums, but we've kind of talked about that. Yeah. With your favourite TV shows. Oh, well, who cares about what I watch? Like, me jocks on the couch. Oh, man, mine's going to be so... You know, everyone's going to be like, what, you're playing metal band? Are you like these TV shows? I'm like, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Oh, well, like comedy TV shows, mine is Friends and How Much Your Mother. <laughs> Sorry, friends. metal fans. Uh, oh, um, more drama the 90s are cool and they want their shitty TV shows back it's getting worse <laughs> wait for it my TV drama will be Outlander great show no idea what that is uh, tell me if I'm missing out Lost I love, love that TV show a lot uh, yeah oh they're heaps actually they put so many good ones but yeah these are for me for me it's Vikings and as you can see I was influenced good. to get an undercut and keep my beard pointy because I'm fucking I want to be Ragnar I want the tattoos on my head. I just, anything. I love that Vikings. I just finished the latest season and although it got a bit sloppy and slow like towards Vikings a good team show. the end of that last show. season. It's oh. better than Game of Thrones. Oh shit. Yeah. Game of Thrones is just milks, milks you at the titty. They're just beep, 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 beep. That last season of Game of Thrones was just like honey dicking us for like five yeah. episodes. It's yeah. just, That's probably not. Yeah. <sighs> and then the last episode where all the, all the good shit happens it was just like they could have made that last episode into a season yeah. of Game of Thrones. It was... Yeah, cool. That was I, it. I don't know. I just watched it, honestly. And I'm finally gotten on that Ozark bandwagon, which has been... Um, it's been it's a tolerable show. I just finished say. watching it, actually. It's very Breaking Bad sort of things. Yeah, I, I don't mind it. I don't it's mind not bad, it. yeah. It's a bit redneck. I, I, I like that. I love to have a laugh at all their voices. Yeah. And uh, what are your favourite clothing brands? The shit. Oh. <laughs> Salvation Army. Op shop. I guess you guys would call them thrift thrift shops. Oh, well, that's my favorite brand. Yeah, I'm old. I need to spend a lot of store. money to make myself look good. So I don't know. Yeah, I, I would say like every metal band would say Vans. Literally every every video that I watch, they just say yeah, Vans is one of them. Yeah, Vans is good. I uh, like Vans. I wear Vans all the time. G G Star O. No, I don't know. No, we don't want to really want to like, advertise for brands really. But yeah. Anything that makes you look good. It doesn't hurt the doesn't, you know, hurt your pocket too much. Yeah, yeah. Oh we got another one. Where's Cage? Where's Cage? Thanks for keeping us rolling, bro. Because <laughs> we're running <laughs> out of time. No. Do you guys work out? Uh, just have a look at the photos from Polaris and you'll see that I'm just a twiggy little man. <laughs> oh, uh, like uh, uh, no, I don't work out. I love to have time to do that, but I don't have time at the moment. But I I I go for like, you know, like if we're, if we're a really fun walk every day pretty much so you can call that workout I guess any mini sport competition and that's, now, the, that's the one we just done to I used to I used to go skiing and like playing football and that kind of thing all the time and you know but yeah then I got old which I should exercise more actually so I will try thanks for the question quick question well, that's weird though. Like, I think I think these days bands need to, like, members need to be very, you know, healthy because of the intense touring schedules and like, you know, riding. You can't just be sloppy and just like do whatever you want. You know, um, mm. I've, I've, uh, I I found it that bands are more responsible about their health these days and they try to tweak create, create weak, a good picture yeah. of this. So, yeah, like I'm everyone, just, just going to be a train wreck. Yeah, that's everyone's sick. fit and so that's good. Not bad. Oh, maybe we should dan- join a dance group. Wait, <laughs> um, when are you going to shave that beard? Post the boss. Shout out to his YouTube channel. Good reactions. Don't do it. Uh, never. <laughs> Sorry, Bob. Mm, that's it. That's never. And um, how, long, how long does it take you guys to perfect a song? Mm. Well... Oh, when the deadline's reached, it's perfected and and it's released. Really. That that's when we have a deadline for sure. That's the, we relate. Yeah, I think I think I think we probably wrote the song in three days once. Yeah, L- literally, Jaden you know, came to my house. We track it like after midnight to like five a.m. I'm not mm-hmm. even kidding. I think I went to bed like five thirty and then go to go to work at like seven. 
and yeah, it's it's really up to deadlines. But when we don't have a deadline, we try to finish it in a month or two, I reckon. Mm. For those who get so sick of the song yeah. that by the time it's released, we're just not vibing with it, and we've got to try and pretend to be yeah. like, like stoked about yeah. that life. Mm. Which a lot of bands talk about, and they like to keep it short, sharp, so they can get on stage and be charismatic about playing that song that they haven't, you know, avoid listening to a thousand times. Yeah, and because we work with Nick as our producer, Nick from Make Them Suffer, um, it's it's really good because we have a very um, I don't know like a tight schedule with him, and it's like a weekly catch up with him, and then that's like a good push for us in the same in a, in a you know in a different way. So yeah, so. Yeah. When we're writing, I think we we really tired and then we just get it done in a month or two. Mm. What is the most embarrassing tour or band story? Ooh, embarrassing. Embarrassing. Um, well, there's there's fucking plenty of them. Um, I I mean I this is a good one actually. So we played a gig and. Um, before we played, there was a DJ on the stage with his turntables, and um, I have a, I have an, um, I'm just a passionate, passionate hate for DJs. And uh, when we got on stage, I spewed some rubbish about, hope y'all are ready for some real music, and the real musicians are here, and the real entertainment's here. Not saying that we were a better band than any of the other bands playing, but I was more just comparing us to a DJ being quite boring and pathetic, and a sad excuse for a live performance. And um, Whoa, did shit hit the fan. I got off stage and I had my sound guy come up to me saying, Jane, you need to go apologise to that guy. I've just had the venue manager hit me up and he's not happy and fuck. To mend the bridges, I had to go suck up, gritting my teeth and bearing that. But I learned not to rubbish anyone on stage, even if they're a dodgy DJ. Dodge, yeah. So that's my most embarrassing moment. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Uh, I try to be very... <laughs> Organized before we show us. Uh, don't really have any embarrassing moment. Like I don't know. Uh, yeah. Oh, actually, once once I, I put uh, put paint on my face in one of nuclear shows, and uh, and then I don't know. I start sweating, and then all the paint started going to my ears, so I couldn't actually see, and it was like yeah, it was so bad, and I I couldn't, you know. Oh, yeah, it's just so bad. So I think I think I hit my head to the mic a couple of times in that show because I couldn't see where the mic is. So every time I was going to like sing, it just like <laughs> hit my head, mm. and then oh, I can imagine that it's just a big sound <laughs> coming through your fucking PA. Yeah, hit your head. I got a few chip. That was embarrassing. Chip teeth. I always and everyone's always rubbishing me. They're going and the set. Our sound guy hates it, but they're always going. Why do you cut the mic? Why do you cut the mic? And and I'll fucking show you why. <laughs> oh. Because when you hold the mic like this, yes, it's going to sound better and you get all the rejection so you might minimise your feedback. But when you fucking hit yourself in the teeth with it, it fucking hurts. So I put my finger there. So the worst I can do is hit myself in the face with my finger. And then I don't lose a tooth because it does fucking start to cost you when you keep chipping your front teeth. And it's not a sonic... It's not a sonic choice. It's not to look cool. It's it's all the protection of me pearly whites here. So there you go. Clarified. <laughs> Any more questions for that? Oh. Um, we got one from an Instagram user with a weird username, but he's asking about your camper and what made you go camper over Axe FX. Oh. Uh, well, well, I've, 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 I did some research and I actually tried them both. Um, the thing I like about Kemper is I used to have a uh, Mesa Boogie Mark V and I like to keep that tone because I love that amp. And then I noticed that you can profile your own tone into a Kemper. Um, first reason I, I bought Kemper, that was this. And then, um, then I, I'm just a simple guy, you know, I don't like to just, you know, have an app on the computer, just have to go and do this and do that. And Real knobs to twist. Eh? Yeah, and a Kempa, a Kempa is literally, looks like a like an analog amp. It's just, it's just digital, it's way lighter. Um, but you know, Axe Effects is really good too. Honestly, there's no, there's, there's nothing against people using Axe Effects or, yeah, or, or like <laughs> Line 6 Helix. It's just a personal preference. So. Line 6, go. If, if you like that tone, 
Go for it. Um, mine was a campfire. I'd rather plug my fucking guitar into a sandwich than a Line 6 yeah. product. But you know, now, these days I don't even use my own profile tone anymore. So I was just using someone else's mm. uh, you know, profile. But then, no, I, I created a tone with a, with, with a new video that we're putting out, uh, which I'm going to talk about my guitar tone. You know, the latest release, which is coming out on June the 10th. Uh, yeah, check that out because uh, I found a new way of creating a tone. And it's just It won't so, break the bank either of it. It is so easy. Mm. Don't worry about having an analog app. So I, a YouTube channel is not only gonna have how to record metal vocals on the cheap yeah. that's already up, it's also gonna have how to get guitars tracked cheap. So if there's any metal bands out there not being a DIY band, I mean what do you make two dollars an hour or something? Because you can yeah, afford don't it within, lose a, that either. within a few hours of working and Plus I get backache from carrying amps and stuff around yeah. so it's just it's just easy man and when you start touring that's just easy and campus quality is just great you know you get the updates all the time there's lots of good support on the website yeah. lots of people putting their own profiles on the website it's just great great community as well and yeah. it's just a good product like it is just a great product pretty much and and um we'll, we'll finish it off with one more from west cage thanks for charging out with all these questions it's been good because yeah, thanks we're almost at the end of our list here we'll but make I like it to LA one. soon um, do you have any tips for upcoming bands? Oh, do we are an upcoming band ourselves, honestly. Do you have any tips for us? We should, because we yeah. need them. We're, we, we're, we're not in the position to give advice. <laughs> yeah, but like, I don't know, if, if you're just starting your band, I guess maybe we can give them tips. Uh, I don't know, just try to, try to pick the right people, work with. Yeah. Try to uh, pick the right bands to play. Try with. to yeah separate your own private life from your band life because it's separate. Mm -hmm. um, try to work with people that they know better than you, man. Don't be arrogant. Like, if if you can find like you know like how what what we're doing now working with Nick from Make Them Suffer. If you can find someone like that, sorry, just shut shut up and listen to them because they've done this you know longer than you and they've already got good you know outcomes out of it. So. Yeah, just trust them and don't be a dickhead. Mm. Just, Many hands yeah. make light work. And yeah. we, we like to create a team around our band yeah. so that it's not good just... Good team, good team. It's sure. not just the musicians grinding away, you know, and struggling. We get, we've got a nice team around us of, of PR people yeah. and, and we, we share the work with people that we know can and do be that. be nice to people. Job better. Just don't be dickheads. Just be nice. Being nice goes a long way. Be nice. I know that. Be I know nice. that. And I'd say, you know, just keep the releases up too. Keep popping the releases up and, you know, it, it just gets easier and easier as you, as you find your formula. And if you've got the good people around you, you love it. Thanks for this cage again, man. Thanks and we've, we've hit the half hour mark, so we're not going to chew your ear off much longer. Yeah. So we'll bid you farewells. Yeah, and then, yeah, so just stay for the, for the updates. You know, as we said, I think couple of times in this live video we are releasing a new track on June the 10th and um, more coming after that so yeah stay tuned stay tuned guys thanks for tuning in yeah see you guys <laughs>